is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zenker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zinker, and I am excited because it's all about saving you time, money, and effort, but at the same time, getting a greater impact. Who doesn't want that? That's why you guys are here. So in today, I'm excited to be talking about that with Buzz, Michael Bozinski. He's a lifelong entrepreneur, a digital marketing thought leader, an author, a chief marketing officer of Buzzworthy Integrated Marketing. And to keep things short and simple, he talks about simple as his digital marketing process. He's going to talk to us today about the rule of 26. And there's a lot more to say about Buzz, but I'm going to let him say it himself. So Buzz, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Penny. So I introduced and I talked about this is all about working smarter. So what is it that you are contributing to our audience for how they can work smarter? Well, let's back up just a hair there. I've been working with businesses in their marketing for over 17 years, and I've been in marketing for over 30. And one of the things that I noticed over time was that the strategy part of digital marketing can be grueling to people because they don't know where to start. And digital marketing has not been around very long, but it has created so many splinters of types of marketing that we can discuss. Back in the day, there was a newspaper or in a magazine And then there became the radio and it was just radio. You did radio ads and then TV and then you had TV ads Then the internet created all these other things, social media. It's insane the number of channels. Oh my goodness. It's insane, right? I mean, now you've got things like TikTok and uh, (laughs) right. It's it's just ever expanding. I totally, I hear what you're saying. So I needed to find a way to help people understand What actually matters to them when it comes to their website marketing, specifically for service centric businesses. But as you mentioned, the rule of 26 can be used for any type of business. The book specifically talks about service space, but the similarities amongst other types of businesses is definitely lends itself to the book, right? Hold on a second. What is the rule of 26, right? People Uh, are like, what? You dropped this on us and now you're not going to tell us what it is. So What is it and why do I need to know about it? All right. So the rule of 26 is a strategy that allows you to only focus on the KPIs of digital marketing. KPIs is key performance indicators within digital marketing that actually mean something to you. They are KPIs that move the revenue needle. And so the rule of 26 states that if you increase your unique traffic by 26%, your conversion rate by 26% and your average revenue per client by 26% from your website, you will double the amount of revenue you're getting from that website. So let me get it that I understand this because I think that people don't get, they're always so focused on the end of the trail, which is how much revenue. And they don't understand that if you tweak in the beginning, Uh the leverage and the multiplier that you get at the end. So from my understanding, tell me if I'm right on this. So if I can get more people to see me Mm -hmm. and I can convert more people, even if it's just like you said, that 26%, 26%. that that's going to lead to double the income because of the process as it filters down. Exactly. The revenue, I wanted to find a way to one, limit how many KPIs we have to look at. If you go to HubSpot, they tout over a hundred different KPIs you can track in digital marketing. I'm not going to look at it. And I'm a digital marketer. How am I expecting anybody to take a look at that many? So when we looked at this, we said, where is it that we get the highest leverage? And like you said, very correctly, we're leveraging specific KPIs so that we don't have to increase Evenly, we can get exponential return by tweaking 
specific KPIs that have direct correlation with your revenue. If you increase 26% of your traffic to your website and you get to charge the same amount on average per client and the same average convert from the website as right. to clients, you made 26% more income. That's really cool because a lot of times you get marketers will sit there and go, well, there's this whole magic thing that happens behind the curtain here. Right. Don't, don't mind all of that. Just trust us in 12 months, you will be richer. <laughs> right. And we've all been burned with that. All right. been burned with that. So right. give me an example. What's a KPI mm -hmm. that you track that has that direct impact that we can see the line through? All three of those. We just talked about the unique traffic. I'll give you an example. If I have a hundred people coming to my website right. and I have say 10% of them converting to clients, right? Right. And I'm charging a hundred dollars, right. I get a thousand bucks, right? Right. So if I had 126 at 10% conversion rate, it means I get 12.6 at hundred dollars, gives me $1,260, which is roughly 26%. Right. It's 26% right. increase right there. Right. right. So you see the direct line through in, right, right to your... So now let's take that and say, okay, well now let's increase the conversion rate by 26%. So now we're going to add 26% to revenue. If you do the math on that, you're going to get 52% more revenue by only increasing each of those two by 26%. Now, this is what gets crazy. If I increase the average revenue per client by 26% mm -hmm. on top of those other two 26%, mm -hmm. I get a compounded effect. So I no longer get 78%. I get 100% more revenue from the website. So I get it. I think everybody gets it. You explained it really clearly. I love that. So that, that it's that compounding effect as you go through and work on each of those stages of the process. So I think most people... They get and they understand how to, let's say, drive more traffic, right? Mm -hmm. And the various different methods to do that. I'm a little bit more interested in, you know, they're scratching their heads. Well, how do I get people to convert? Mm -hmm. Right. And I know how to raise my prices. So if you don't mind, I'd like to just spend a moment talking about the conversion, because I feel that that's one of the things that people don't spend any time or money on because they're spending it on getting more traffic and they're not taking advantage of each of those. So give us some tips with that in mind that we can create that leverage from the conversion piece of it. Great. I actually want to go back to average revenue per client because it's directly correlated with your conversion rate in that this, you don't necessarily have to raise your prices by 26% to get an average of 26% income. One of the things that we find is that attracting the right type of client mm. without even touching your revenue, how much you're actually charging mm -hmm. can increase your average revenue per client by 26% because not all clients are created equal. That's right. And so if we can identify our perfect clients, our most profitable clients, the people who ask for the least amount of time for the most amount of revenue. So basically the people that you have the highest impact with the least amount of effort. Those are the most profitable clients for you. And they're also usually your happiest clients. If we can identify those people, we can have less clients. If we have less clients paying more, we've increased the average revenue per client. So once we've identified who that is, then we go back to that conversion rate optimization. And we take a look at how we are talking to visitors on our site. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest- So that we're talking to those people. Those people specifically. Because right. remember, you can make some of the people happy some of the time. Right. But you cannot make all the people happy all the time, nor should you, because it's very unprofitable. Right. It wastes a lot of time trying to be everything to everyone. And I'm sure you've had plenty of people tell you that on this show before, but I'll say it again in marketing- Market to who is most profitable to deal with. The people that you can't wait for them to call you. When you see their email in your inbox, you go, yes, what do they want? I'm ready to serve them. I'm happy to serve them. They get me. They pay me. They appreciate me. Those are the people we want to talk to. So when we look at websites, there are two things that most businesses fail to do. And this is why they have a low conversion rate. One is they talk about themselves. 
Now, as a service-based business, <laughs> right? But we've been trained to do that, right? What does a right. brochure do? A brochure says, hey, we are so-and-so and we do blah, blah, blah. Here's what we what do. Is a website? Right. But we've been taught the website is an online brochure. So that's what you do, right? right. No. Right. Now with search marketing and inbound marketing, blogs, social media, all of that stuff, people are asking the internet questions. They're looking for answers to their problems, not your expertise, not your solution, not your accolades, their problem. People are selfish in this specific instance. They're looking for a solution to their pain. They're looking for a solution to their problem, or they're looking for a path to their dreams. Because that's the only two things you can do. You can solve a problem, overcome an issue, whether it be pain or a mathematical problem, or you're attaining a dream. I want to go on a vacation. I want to grow my hair back. I want to whatever it is, right? (laughs) I'm not going to touch that. (laughs) (laughs) I do it on purpose. So when we're talking, first, we have to take the I's, the we's, and the us's out of our vernacular. Right. And the you's and the yours. And then we have to talk specifically to their pain, the perfect client's pain, not everybody's pain, just your perfect client's pain. Then we can propose a solution and then paint the picture of what it looks like when they apply this solution to their problem so that they can see how they're going to feel. What are they going to look like afterwards? And then, and only then, can you suggest that, hey, if you want to learn more, Click here and we'll tell you about us. Mm -hmm. They have to connect that you are the person who can solve their problem. And then they they want to know how. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. So if everything is about them, it doesn't matter who you are. They will eventually need to understand who you are and like and trust you. Yes, we get that. But that's not the first page at all. Some people, oh, you put that at the bottom. No, I put frequent last questions at the bottom. Mm -hmm. About us can be up at the top in a link. Then you're giving permission. You have just been given a permission when they say about us or our team or any of those links. That's when they literally with their mouths asked, I want to hear about you. And then you can talk about you in relation to what you do for them. Right. It's not about your accolades. Yes, in certain professions, we have awards. If you're seeing a video here, you can see. I have a couple of awards there too. And we all have them if we're good at what we do. Those are almost a given. People rather see what other people say about you because yeah. I've met some award-winning gurus in my day who weren't worth anything. They're really good at getting awards, but do they create results? Right. Back in the day, I had this thing that says less prestige, more results. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Right. I think Especially I have a t-shirt that says less talk, more action. Right. There you go. Don't so, talk about it. Be about it. So what's the biggest challenge? So now I know what to do, right? Or I mean, there's a lot more, but we only have a short show. <laughs> no worries. What do you suggest next? Like where are the biggest challenges that people aren't getting to the next step of implementing? So implementation is the next challenge, right? And it's really because there's two types of people. There are people with more time than money or more money than time. For those entrepreneurs who have more time than money, they have to figure out what to do. The book is full of tactical objectives that you can handle on your own. And there's opportunities to get help with any of them throughout the book. It's a short book. It's only 120 pages. And we'll have the book link on the the show notes. We'll have the book link available for all of you. Perfect. I wanted it to be practical. I wanted it to be things that people can do, but we also know that you're going to hit a ceiling of capabilities, right? Mm -hmm. But if I can get you at least 26% more income now, and even 52%, and we just run out of steam at that last 26, that lever there. Wow, you've just saved a lot of money. And oh, oh my gosh, you're already making more money. Now we can afford that investment. Yeah. And the other flip side is finding somebody you like and trust to do it for you because you have more time than money. Your time is more valuable than the cash that you are willing to invest to get more money, Right. right? Which is just buying more time. And that's where that whole 
dichotomy of time is money comes from. And as entrepreneurs, we're so eager to spend our time, yet it is the one commodity we can't replace. We can always make more money. Right. Right. So I see the biggest hurdle is in implementation and deciding whether you're going to do it yourself or you're going to find somebody to do it for you. Or in my case, we have done with you solutions that help people with maybe in that middle where they have some time and they have some money, but they don't have all the time, nor do they have all of the passion to learn a new skill because marketing is a skill. And they know that they are better to invest money so that they can keep time where they're most passionate and in their genius zone. Yeah. You know, I want to bring something up because it came up for me as one of the things that I've seen in working with clients, and I'm not sure this is a time or money. I mean, it is, but it requires your time is that they're not set up. They don't have their numbers. They don't even know. Like there are a lot of companies and even bigger companies that you'd be surprised that Mm -hmm. they don't even know what their conversion rates are. So if that's the case, then do I start there or do Mm -hmm. I start somewhere else? Just so people understand that if they're not even in a place where they know what those are, then they're not even in a place to measure it and see what kind of progress they're having. Should they chicken in the egg? Should they Mm -hmm. work on their systems and get that clear? Or should they start to implement and do the systems later? So in the book, I lay out very specifically that you have to know your numbers. You have no idea where you're going. You don't know what 26% looks like unless you know your numbers, right? Right. But nice thing is, is you can identify at least one of those numbers by opening up your QuickBooks. That's pretty easy that we see this many people. This is our average. average So you're talking about like the average revenue per per client. Yeah. And And we lay that out. It's tricky though, for some companies who may have multiple different products and variation of their products. Still, Um, we keep it simple. We keep it simple. It says that's your average, right? Okay. That's why we say average. I wanted to bring that up because people get caught up in those little details. And then they don't get further because like, oh, we can't come up with that. It's too complex. Which one do we take? Keep it simple. Just take the average across everything is what you're saying. And then I boil that down to a year. Uh So you have a dentist who says, well, a new client to me is worth eight to 15 years worth of revenue. Right. Right. And then it's how many patients per household. So we say, okay, just take those are different statistics though. Lifetime value is different than your average revenue. Yes. And average revenue per client is only based on what time period you're doing average revenue. Because it could be average revenue per client per month, right. average revenue client per quarter, per year, per decade, right. whatever that looks like. And then you have your lifetime, right? right? So what we say is, hey, listen, let's keep it in the year. Mm-hmm. You know, in the last 12 months, you've had X amount of clients and you've had X amount of revenue. Divide revenue by the amount of clients you've had. There's your average revenue per client. Simple. Done. There's one. Now you take a look at that and go, is that profitable? How many of those are profitable? All that good stuff. So that, and we talk about that in the book. Then there's the conversion rate and the traffic. That's where we get into Google Analytics. It's one tool that will tell you both of those plus a bunch of other stuff that you probably don't care about. But the two that we really want to know is conversion rate and their traffic. I literally give that service away. It's in the book. There's a way to contact us to get that for absolutely free because I don't think that entrepreneurs need to be spending time trying to learn how to do it, nor should they need to spend money to do it. That information is just crucial to your own business. And I have a mission of obliterating entrepreneurial poverty. And to do that, I need to arm entrepreneurs with the knowledge they need to run their business right. Awesome. I love that. We can talk all day. But unfortunately, we have a limited time frame today. And perhaps I'll have you come back and we dive a little deeper into some other issues. Love it. But before we end the show, I just want to ask you a couple of quick tips here. So first thing is, how do you define productivity and why? I've had my business for 17 years. Mm -hmm. And so to give you a little bit of background, I actually reorganized my business after 15 years because I basically grew my company broke. (laughs) I did. We were having multi seven figure revenue years and I wasn't paying myself six figures to myself. Right. right? So So you focus on growth and not profitability is what I'm hearing. Exactly. Right. And I was also looking at growth, not scale. So -hmm. when we talk about productivity, I always look at leveraging and scaling because Mm -hmm. that is where we can see productivity. 
right? To do more is not necessarily to get more. At some point, you have that point of diminishing returns. Absolutely. I always look at it as like, okay, if I give 20%, that's great. But if I can get 40%, does that mean I start getting 50, 60% out? That right there is productivity. Mm -hmm. Staying inside my zone of genius is productivity because I can get a lot more done and leverage my talents if I can stay into that zone of genius. And that took me a long time to learn. But if people can look at their business as what you're doing right now, can it be defined on working in your business or on your business? Everything Mm -hmm. in your business is not as productive as on your business. business. Absolutely. I kind of talk about it with the 80-20 rule is that you should be spending at least 20% of your time on your business, Mm -hmm. really strategizing so that you're getting 80% of the impact of that. So obviously, depending on how many people you have in your staff and so forth, more time, more leverage and so forth. But that's the a goal, minimum. I find that yeah, a lot of entrepreneurs minimum. are not even spending that. So exactly. that's the minimum. And then the goal is to go all the way to 80. To 80. Exactly. Because you're getting 80 times four. Exactly. It's not, you're not getting the... 80% of your time on strategy to get 20% more. You're getting 80% of your time to exponentially scale your business. Right. Because every 20% creates a leverage, right? Right. So you're actually getting, I'm not so good at math. Two times the output. Yeah. It's something like that. Right. So um, (laughs) two times, two times, two times two. Yeah. That's it. But I think it's even more than that. Cause I think that there's a greater leverage component to it. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're right. Cause it'd be, I think think it's more than 16. Yeah. It'd be two times, four times eight times eight. Yep. Yeah. It would be, I think it's more out there. Let's but put anyway, that in the show notes. We figured it out. It's big. <laughs> so anyway, where can people reach you, Buzz? Where can they, you know, we're going to have everything in the show notes, but just give us a quick shout out of the best place to reach you. And Great. Yeah. And they- so real easy, ruleof26.com has the, all the information on the book. And then my company, Buzzworthy Integrated Marketing is at buzzworthy.biz. Thank you so much for being here. Did I miss anything? Is there anything that I should have asked you that you want to quickly share or? Oh, it was a great conversation. I hope everybody got a little bit of something out of it. I feel like we got some truth bombs in there. I'm sure they did. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Penny. And thank you all for being here. Drop the mic. I mean, Buzz delivered and he did it in a really simple way for you to understand There were a lot of bombs in there, like even just in that statement at the end that he said about that he grew his company broke, right? If you just think about where your company is in diminishing returns and really focus on scale and leverage and using this rule of 26 is a simple way to start yourself in that direction. So go ahead and get his book, get in touch with Buzz, see how he can support you or do it on your own, get his book, whatever it is, shift that mindset, focus on profit and scale and create that leverage in your business. My name is Penny Zinker, and this is Take Back Time. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time.